Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more into the breach do we go, dear friends. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Well, kind of a quiet day. This is where action actually starts Monday and Tuesday, where options roll over. We're basically flat on the S&Ps, up 42 on the uh, Dow Nasdaq's up 30. Russell's up uh, 2,000? No, it's the Russell 2,000, but again, kind of flat. I wasn't expecting a whole lot. In fact, I was kind of surprised that we even kind of a little lower here. Uh, and that is, uh, I didn't think we were going higher, but I didn't think that it was 20 points lower in the market, maybe 10, but it got a little bit more than that. Uh, so what's going on? Everybody's uh, just uh, deciding to sit on their hands, I suspect, until we start hearing what's going on at the G20 meeting in Japan on Friday. Uh, most people probably not getting uh, too worked up if they are sitting on fairly large uh, wins. If they're uh, on the downside of the market, some of the ones that didn't come back in the last big run, you know, they're probably still seeing people selling some weak sectors and going after some of the other ones. Of course, the big surprise after the bell last night, after the infotainment crowd on CNBC had been talking uh, down Micron, uh, was... Uh, Actually, uh, well, they had to postpone the end of the world because uh, that was it. 37.08, up $4.40, up 13.5%. Uh, and I was actually chatting with one of my subscribers yesterday. And uh, uh, I think the discussion was why we took a, a quick 10 point hit in the market. And I said, well, from what I saw in the news thing, somebody came on and told uh, everybody that it was probably going to open at 20 today. Uh, and uh, that kind of hit it a little bit, but hurt the rest of the market a lot more because I think people had already been pushing down and getting short uh, on Micron, but I, I just didn't see it. Uh, I, I'm a pretty good subscriber to computer uh, uh, deals. So I see when there's lots of memory for sale or uh, lots of motherboards or processors or discounts going on on hard drives, and there just wasn't a lot of it. Uh, if they've got a lot extra, now they there has been uh, some of that, and why well, kind of laid off when Micron was up around 60 bucks. Uh, but you know what? Some of the technology that these guys and in Intel have uh, worked on with the new memory technology, actually starting to see a few... Uh, real uh, true support for it. It seems like it's been f rather slow, but my guess is that uh, that kind of memory is going to make them a lot more money in the uh, near future, maybe in the next year. Uh, but uh, I saw a guy actually build a, a fairly expensive PC. Uh, you would think that, well, how expensive one could get, but I think this one was probably by the time the guy's done is probably about 25 grand, but uh, he can have uh, up to six people editing video on it in darn near real time. Um, so for that, probably not a bad deal. Uh, of course, uh, the company that made out like bandits, uh, Intel to a certain extent, but, uh, uh, and uh, NVIDIA. So, I mean, those are the guys that are making huge margins. And that's, everybody wants to talk about how much sales you've got, but, it's not just how much sales you've got, but it's the uh, margin on it. And again, Intel continues to make somewhere around 60, 65% margins. Uh, AMD, about half that, which means that they probably make a fourth of what Intel makes, uh, if they're lucky. If everything was the same, uh, cutting your margins in half is logarithmically less. Why I've always wondered why AMD was getting uh, valuations that were close to Intel. Intel has its own issues, 
Uh, but uh, a lot of shorts getting squeezed out, and I thought it was kind of funny after the bell last night because when it popped, I saw a whole bunch of people piling on and getting short uh, around the uh, low 34s and at uh, 34.99. Man, they wanted to short 34 horribly. Um, and, of course, uh, it's not the end of the world for them, but 37 bucks is not 32 what we saw at tomorrow. And uh, I said it in the den yesterday. The end of the world was postponed once again, uh, and I just don't see it. Now, uh, I can understand where a lot of people would not want to get out on a limb before the FOMC meeting because this is a, a binary outcome, probably good or bad, and we have no idea uh, what uh, Trump will accept and what uh, uh, Z or Xi will offer. And this is one of the times where I don't think I have a fairly large edge in the market. Uh, that is that there just isn't, uh, I, I can tell what crowds do, but the individual man, much tougher to decide what a single person will do. And uh, I try to kind of stay on the sidelines. That being said, uh, I have some fairly interesting setups, but I think those develop into next week. I don't think there's a lot going on out here. Of course, uh, GLD's down a buck or so, so we finally hit the crest in that. Uh, but uh, eh, not a lot of signals yet uh, on where that's pulling back to. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always post a message in the den. Uh, what else do we have? I got an email already. I'll answer that question when we come back. We'll do a little history first, and then uh, we'll move on. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1974, the first item scanned with a UPC code, those little bars on everything, uh, was used to ring up a purchase for the first time at a Marsh supermarket in Troy, Ohio. First item scan was a 10-pack of Juicy Fruit gum. Uh, if you've never looked at one and wondered exactly what's in it, it's kind of a marvel. There's 95 numbers barcoded uh, into a UPC code. Uh, the one on the left always starts as zero. The one on the right always starts actually two big codes. Uh, the one on the right uh, actually always starts with one. So they know uh, if you flip it, which ones, uh, which ways right to left, whether or not you have it up or down. Uh, kind of interesting to know if you look at the first zero down on the lower left corner, it will tell you what kind of barcode it is, a standard a weighted item like uh, bananas or fruit. Uh, number three is a pharmacy and number five is a coupon. And of course, uh, it's really made up of 15 different sections. A lot of people don't know just how interesting the barcode is. Or maybe it's just me, but uh, very interesting. And of course, uh, a lot of information in that barcode. But uh, even in 1974, we had scan lasers that could scan barcodes, which is kind of interesting. Now they're ubiquitous everywhere. I'm listening for the music. Is it there? There it's coming. We'll be back in a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Don't miss the last chance to sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner at just $97 a month. Starting July 1st, we're raising the price to $197 a month. This is your last chance to lock in the $97 rate for as long as you remain a subscriber. And as always, new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk. Don't miss this last chance to sign up at the low rate of just $97 a month. Sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And one of the questions is uh, about one of the rants, kind of, I went on yesterday and an additional question, but uh, they kind of come together. Uh, the question is, have I found any good applications for uh, for uh, a uh, a blockchain-like product yet? Uh, and as we discussed, I think maybe six months ago, uh, Microsoft's really on the idea of making a uh, open database uh, with some of the features of blockchain, uh, but with the speed of traditional databases. One of the problems with a, a true blockchain is it slows down the bigger it gets and you can't, you've literally got to have it uh, from the day it was initiated, which means you get all the data uh, from uh, in F an item. Uh, and again, that becomes rather large after a, a long period of time. Uh, but um, I was talking about YouTube uh, and their uh, desperate assault on free speech. Uh, and there's more stuff coming. I got a lot of emails from you guys last night uh, also telling me about other people that are being thrown off of YouTube, uh, espousing an agenda that uh, YouTube does not like. Uh, but this is one of the ones I was talking about yesterday, and this is called LBRY. It's kind of a YouTube alternative. Uh, but these guys have, uh, are, are pretty interesting in the fact that they've got kind of a blockchain thing on the back end so that you know exactly how many people watch whatever video. And if you're an advertiser, you want to go after stuff, you really don't have to spend that much time uh, finding out whether or not, you know, uh, what – YouTube said was the number of hits that they were getting. Uh, this application always, uh, it's not like a browser. You have to literally download an application to your PC or phone. Uh, but it updates a blockchain registry of everybody that viewed your particular channel or other channels. So you can actually see where the volume is and where people, what they're watching and how long. Um, I think that this is one of a bunch of these guys going on, but I, I do think it opens up uh, for even uh, companies like uh, the big networks, like NBC, ABC, and CBS, where you kind of have to guess, you know, how many people are watching, 
the show. Uh, this, almost in real time, you can find out what's trending, what's not trending. And since the uh, blockchain on this is actually public, maybe a better YouTube. Uh, but uh, I think that there's a, uh, there's a lot of people that are going to go after YouTube, and this is just one idea. Uh, when you're kind of stuck and you really don't do much, and then you start ticking off the people that actually create the content, I think uh, this is one idea that might get some traction. And like I said, there are not a lot of great applications uh, for a traditional blockchain. This one's a modified one. So I think if, if, at some point, all the data falls off. Um, the problem with the original blockchain thing is you have to continue piling all the data on it from the first trade, which you can go back and look at. But um, interesting idea. Um, anyway, uh, you can check that out. It's L B R Y, and uh, eh, a lot of other stuff going on. Okay, what else do we have? Okay, thanks for the volume. Those are the links from yesterday. Okay, thanks, 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 okay. And a question about uh, machine learning. Uh, David, you uh, had a fairly good call on the UVXY for expiration. Um, basically want to know how I actually came up with my 80%, 90% uh, probability of it closing above 32 bucks on Friday. I bought some uh, options on Thursday. I think it was on Thursday. Um, well, you can do it historically. Uh, I've been updating uh, some of my models to get uh, better because they, they can always be better. Uh, but uh, that one used a, uh, a, or that one actually uses a uh, system that actually tries to win a game and you give uh, rewards for when it's right and you take away money when it's wrong and you just keep playing the game over and over and over and over again. And uh, at that way, you can try to find out from a sea of data uh, what the best thing that you could do and it will try things that you would never think to try, of course, and that's the good part about a computer. Uh, but you can go back and historically set up those. Uh, sometimes they're called adversarial neural networks. Some of the times they're called something else. But they, basically, they were developed uh, in the beginning to learn Pong and everything like that, which is if you can understand better or worse, uh, kind of like if you ever go to the doctor and try to get glasses, they go, is that better? Is that worse? Better or worse? Better or worse? That's basically uh, what you do, and uh, they call it an agent. But uh, it's just imagine a player, and you try. Uh, it'll try all the different things you program it to do, and uh, you can get that kind of data uh, back from it about what works and what doesn't. A lot of times, it's actually surprising. Uh, it took what I would have looked at before as maybe a 75 percent or 70% chance of closing above 32 bucks on Friday uh, to uh, basically your 80 or 90%. Uh, so it's gotten, the, the model's gotten a little bit better uh, with some of the new uh, modes that I've tried over the last couple of years. And again, the only thing that I lack from total retirement was figuring out how to pick a high, which is about uh, four times as hard as picking a low for subscribers. Uh, over the last two years uh, using my sector oscillator. Uh, man, I don't think I've missed a low. Uh, the question is, where do you sell the highs in this, buy the uh, dips and sell the rips? Uh, and I may have been a little bit too early in selling some of them, but again, I missed some of the worst destruction uh, on the pullbacks, so that isn't it. Uh, Axion uh, Enterprise, I think we talked about this a uh, couple of days ago. It's always been on my list. Uh, and he uh, yeah, pulled back a little bit off the highs, but uh, yeah, I don't know if there was a whole lot in that I was talking about. I think there's actually a newer one here from yesterday. Still on my list. Uh, let's go through a few others. Do I still have my, where's my clock? There it is. So I've got a minute left in this segment. We'll see. Aclaris Therapeutics, ACRS. 
Uh, this one testing a 500,000 share low on June 6, $4.26. I uh, got into it yesterday with 300,000, today about 100,000 shares. So some of these biotechs, even though they came down on, several, on fairly heavy energy, uh, about 750,000 shares on the 21st, uh, not finding a lot of juice to blow out the bottom. Uh, again, uh, any kind of heavy volume down day signals more of a consolidation than a V bottom, so you want to kind of move on. And I guess we're going to break here now. We'll look at a few more of these when we come back. And we'll look at uh, some bigger stocks, uh, the well-known stocks uh, toward the end of the show. Give me a call at 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. of least resistance is david white's daily trading newsletter and if you're looking for active trading ideas then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service david uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his path of least resistance newsletter using a combination of equity trades along with options david keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Uh, someone wanted me to look at MU real quick and see if I saw much in there. Uh, you've got a huge gap. Up. A lot of that is a short covering. Uh, mostly from the drumbeat, I suspect, of many on CNBC um, declaring the end of the world for Micron. Um, I always wonder how much those guys get paid for that or whether or not they're actually short Micron and they lost or if they just badmouthed it. But uh, from even that till last night, somebody wrote in and told me that they were uh, selling sell it 
when it was at 34, 35 bucks last night. Um, I'm just assuming a lot of people were short, and we did have fairly decent short uh, sellers into yesterday's. But um, you know, I, I I I couldn't tell you that it was going higher, but generally, when all of Wall Street tells you something's going lower, you want to watch out. And I heard a great deal of that going into earnings yesterday. And that is once everybody believes something, you want to take time and reflect. I certainly wouldn't have been short going into yesterday with the overall bearish tone of it. Uh, you're right back into two gaps. Could you get to 38 bucks? I think you could. Uh, do you get an opportunity to buy this back at $35? I'd say the odds are fairly good uh, at 35 bucks. Uh, if you get a pullback, that that would probably be a fairly decent buy. Um, and my guess is that we'll have people shorting the living daylights out of that for days to come, um, which is generally not bearish but bullish because those guys will eventually give up. Um, some of the other stocks that I think bear taking a look at, uh, CARS, C-A-R-S, testing a uh, previous low, uh, yesterday, you had uh, 1.2 million shares going in to a 2.3 million share low. Today, you got kind of a little bounce with 400,000 shares. Again, we did have some volume in some of these stocks. If you had a big candle down in uh, downside like you did yesterday in cars, you want to assume a U bottom at best, not a V bottom. Uh, some of the other companies that I think are worth taking a look at here is ADT. Uh, first low is 8 million shares at 588. That's January uh, 20, uh, January 2nd of this year. Uh, you got uh, through it with a nickel on June 3rd, uh, but only 5.6 million shares. So you were 2.4 million shares light. Now, yesterday, what did you get? Uh, you got 2 million shares. So that's exactly what you want to see in a very long-term bottom. Uh, and that is uh, volume decreasing after each pop down and volume less than the volume uh, or energy up. In this case, the June 3rd low to the uh, June 14th high on my power uh, law vector indicator was a 7 and down with a 6. Now, I would have liked to see that down with a 3, and I probably would hop on. But uh, not a bad-looking chart out here. And again, uh, any close above $5.88 uh, gives you pretty much an easy way to put your back against the wall. Uh, any close below that is problematic. One of the uh, better-looking charts out here is AdTrans, A-D-T-R, uh, yeah, A-D-T-N. Huge day up on April 18th, did so on 2 million shares. It's slowly come back all the way. 378,000 shares yesterday. Today, just 119,000 shares. Uh, let's look at the profile on this one just to make sure. But, I mean, if you're looking for low-risk trades, there's no better uh, than this, that you take off, you got a lot of volume, and it comes back and no one wants to sell. Uh, it provides networking, communications, uh, equipment worldwide, Company operates through two segments, network solutions and uh, support and services. Uh, don't know a lot about the company, haven't looked at it, but this chart tells me one thing, and that is that even with the uh, heavy pushes down yesterday that had a little bit more volume, um, one of the better looking charts out here. And, uh, you know, when I buy stocks, I like to buy stocks uh, at lows that are, you know, five, 10 bucks. This is 15. Um, but still looks fairly good uh, because 15 could go to 20 fairly quickly, uh, and that's uh, about a 30% bounce in it. Uh, but I think you could make a case, long-term case, uh, that you certainly could get back up to 20 on it. And a lot of stocks, you could not. But this one's kind of come back. It's made its ABC. It may take a little while longer, uh, but anywhere about 15 to $15.50 uh, looks like some fairly decent risk reward. How about X? Uh, to, to, to question about X. Uh, again, a huge bet on uh, a trade deal, uh, literally going south. And uh, again, 
and you know, this is a more of a roll of the dice than I'd want to get into. You're actually looking for a trade deal that either one protects steel in the United States or two goes south. And therefore we have tariffs on Chinese steel that they've been dumping for probably 10 or 15 years. Uh, at the first, we didn't mind, pretty much tried to put out uh, any ability for us to build anything if a war came. I think that there will be something in this trade deal for them. So I think you're close. Um, in fact, I'm trying to find out or think of a scenario where steel would take it in the chin come Monday if this thing blows up or it makes a deal. It may not go up on uh, one of the other, but, you know, I think, you know, if we find out that there's a big carve out for U.S. steel and this trade deal, a limitation to how much steel that China could produce and dump in the United States, and they do dump it uh, for strategic military reasons, i.e. they don't want us able uh, to go back and make a lot of stuff yet if a war comes in. Uh, okay, what else do we have? So, eh, interesting. Um, I think I think you got a low risk trade. There are not a lot of low risk trades into Monday, but I think uh, hedge you win well, tails maybe it's flat. But uh, that's an educated guess. I just don't see that much in it. I think you're better off waiting and uh, buying it uh, if the trade deal really favors or the lack of a trade deal Monday favors it. Uh, two, two, two. Okay, what else did we have out here? Uh, CNX. Um, console Energy, again, you had a little bit of a boost out here, but it's all based not on supply and demand, uh, but on the thought of what supply and demand would be uh, with issues coming out. And although we've bounced back up to around 60, uh, my guess is that we are headed back down to about 45 bucks on crude when everything settles down, but it will be a wild ride down there. Uh, do, 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 what else do we have? Diebold on my list of stuff. This thing really took off uh, with a sign of huge strength on the 13th of February, gapped up with almost 18 million shares. Came back into that with a two and a half million shares back on May 2nd. We're right back into there with 1.5 million shares yesterday. Uh, today, 444,000 shares. Uh, yesterday, 931,000 shares. So pretty light volume. Anywhere in this eight to seven dollars looks like it's going to have pretty massive support. DBD. We'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. Uh, what else do we have going on here? Oh, we'll look at a few more out here. Anyway, Diebold, actually looking fairly good. Now, you've got this big gap out here. Uh, I'm just saying that there's probably fairly decent support in this area. Uh, keep an eye on it. I don't see any reason to buy it today. But, you know, to me, the risk reward at 650 would be pretty astronomical if it gets down there with light volume. Uh, what else do we have on my list of stuff? Finistar, F-N-S-R. Um, yeah, I don't see much in that one. Grubhub, G-R-U-B, back up to its highs of April 26, 77.50. 14 million shares. Got into it yesterday with 6 million shares. Uh, today, 2 million shares. So, again, resistance uh, pretty strong in that one see what else is on my list of stuff. Uh, question about Lyft coming into the email. I don't know why you'd want to get into it. Uh, too many unknowns. Uh, it's just been going sideways here. But, you know, I probably wouldn't be shorting it. I think everybody, again, kind of like Micron, too many people piling on. Uh, doesn't make me think that we'd want to be in that one. Uh, one of the ones that uh, I think eventually is going to fall back to earth uh, rather uh, uh, and could drop 50% uh, is Match Group. Uh, this is the online. I'm going to give it a uh, easy uh, discussion of, of dating because it's not quite that. It's kind of like the shortcut uh, from dating. Uh, anyway, MTCH. Uh, you got uh, the June 3rd low of 2.2 uh, million shares. Uh, today, you got about 1.7 million shares. Uh, you did have a nice pop. I think that was on earnings back on the 8th of May up on 7.2 million shares. So it's actually not looking too bad. I suspect we could see any kind of uh, of movement, maybe even a test of, the, of that 75 bucks again. Uh, but this is kind of getting up here uh, to a level I think that can't be supported very long. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, what else? Okay, got some more email here. Uh, okay. Um, has my ideas changed anything on uh, on uh, Slack? And the answer is no. You did have an update today, but Again, this one's going to be a tough one to trade for a while, uh, but you really don't have any history, so you really can't. It's uh, very tough to trade going forward. Um, MYGN, looking at this, kind of trying to break out the lows. Three million shares back on May 29th, 2308. You went under that yesterday with 1.5 million shares. Today, uh, 2303 uh, is where it's at now. You get a close back above 2308 and you've got the possibility of a floor 
and a little bit too much energy on the downside to me also says that you might have more consolidation to go. Uh, to, 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 well, it is the dog days of summer. And a lot of unknowns. Netgear. Uh, taking a look at this one. It's kind of come back down. I suspect that this one will do well over time, especially as people upgrade to 5G. Uh, but those folks, or at least the router folks, are probably going to be for kind of late to the party. I do kind of like the way that this thing's starting to base out around 25 bucks. Uh, but maybe this Christmas, maybe right after Christmas, I mean, we're just really getting the first 5G phones installed and being able to get some of that new 5G goodness for Wi-Fi uh, back to your phone and other devices. But that stuff is still fairly slow to come. Um, not only do you have to have 5G uh, for your cellular service, of course, you need to have 5G for your Wi-Fi also. And it's actually called, what, Wi-Fi 6 now? They started giving it numbers instead of A, Bs, and Cs, and all the horrible uh, numbers that they've had before, A, C, slash, you know, they made it incredibly tough to figure out what you had for Wi-Fi. And, of course, the new numbering system coming in. I think that might help buyers actually understand that they're going to get something more when they go to a, uh, I think it's Wi-Fi 6. I'll have to look at it during the break. Um, I think this may be very close. I'd like it to, across the summer, base out. Uh, but, you know, you may, especially when these new 5G phones hit, and especially after the Apple 5G phones hit, you might see a lot of uh, interest in this. Uh, not everybody buys a Apple router, and that uh, Netgear actually he does fairly well with the sales and upgrades of new Apple products. Those folks go out and generally they buy Netgear routers for their homes and the new high-speed stuff. Uh, to, 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 what else do we have out here? I wanted to look at a few other ones. Uh, to, to, uh, P-Lab, which is uh, Photronics. Uh, this one, again, you needed uh, less than about 400,000 shares yesterday. You had uh, 370,000 shares, but you are kind of coming back up to that 626 level. I don't see a lot in that. Uh, to, to do, what else do we have? WTI. Take a quick look at that. I don't see much in that, John. So we'll move on. Da, 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 okay, and what else? Da, 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 da. Okay, I got a question to look at RH. Uh, this one's falling apart. We Like we said, uh, probably a good chance this gets around 130 again. Uh, if you could get 130 on this thing, 128, and run all the shorts out of this, uh, this may be fairly nice. I haven't seen the short interest on this lately. Uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look, see if I've got anything here. Da, 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 da. Okay. Eh, it's been kind of light, actually. So you don't have a lot. I can see why it's kind of been rather weak. Uh, but I still think uh, this has got some fairly high short interest in it. I still think you want 128 or so. Question on reshorting Tesla. Uh, TSLA. Of course, we had that short in the Tech Insider uh, where we started shorting at about 340 bucks. Um, we covered it, what, 230 or something? I uh, got down to one, uh, 176. Uh, you know, when it got down there, eh, some people were eh, giving it a little extra hand and got to push it down. This is about right why I sold it, and that is where support was going to be. So now the support has actually become resistance. Uh, but again, a lot of people short this stock. You want it to rip and get rid of as many short sellers as you can. Let's take a quick look on that and see if there's uh, much going on. And I still got 15, 20% shorts on the average day. I want to wait until these people kind of give up on it. It may go, it may have to go sideways for three months or six months. Uh, but there's also one other thing that may make Tesla go sideways for even longer. We'll talk about that when we come back.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien. Ryan, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back. Got a question. Uh, does the court ruling for Qualcomm limit stock and uh potential going forward as you understand it and the answer for me is no and uh, there are a couple of reasons one uh, the judge has been incredibly Apple friendly I think a lot of those things that uh, they lost in the court suit will be appealed and probably won uh, she's had two other rulings with Apple uh, and uh, both of those have been overturned after time so she's kind of a homer She's in San Francisco, and generally when they uh, get an appeal uh, to an appeals court outside of the uh, eight, is it eight circus? They call it the circus because they're overthrown all the time. I think there's a lot to it. There would probably be some ongoing stuff, but by the time that's settled, I bet 80% of what they have going forward is going to be 5G, and they'll just keep moving on. I mean, when you have a almost monopoly-like position, uh, you can continue to move on. The China stuff really helps them, which is uh, even yesterday when uh, they were pushing the market down, you might notice that Qualcomm was higher. So a little bit of that uh, probably goes a long way. Um, but uh, it'll take, take a time to burn off. But my guess is no, that uh, they don't have any long-term uh, problems with it. They already settled with Apple. Uh, and it's going to be very tough 
for them to go to court and Apple to say, well, we just, we settled. Well, what was so wrong with that settlement, right? So they were kind of lucky that they got settled on with it. Uh, okay, so what else do we have? That's about it. Kind of quiet day after the bell tonight. We've got uh, KBH Homes, so we'll get a little bit of that. One of the other stocks I like to look at is Miller Herman. That tells you how much hiring's going on because people, when they buy hire a lot of people, they buy new furniture. MLHR. So look at those two tonight. Give us a little view into tomorrow. Anyway, uh, sell when you can, not when you have to. And as always, we'll be here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.